Hello! Good day to all science learners out there. Welcome to DepEd TV. I am Mam Con, your grade 7 science teacher, and I am here to help you be Sci Connected. I hope you are having fun while learning at home. Come and join me. Let's discover the wonders of science. Before we start, make sure you have your pen, paper, and self-learning module. Can you still remember our previous lesson? Let's sing the song you have learned last episode. This may also help you recall the lesson learned last time. Let's sing it all together! What was our lesson last episode? It's all about pure substance. What is a pure substance? A pure substance has definite composition and distinct chemical properties. Now, what are the properties of pure substances? A pure substance is homogeneous or uniform in appearance, has a fixed boiling point, and melts completely or smoothly all throughout. Examples of pure substance are elements and compounds. It's good if you can still recall our lesson last episode. Let's have an enrichment activity to see if you really understood the lesson last episode. Just read the paragraph to be flushed on screen. Take down notes because there will be a question right after. Are you ready? You may now prepare your pen and paper. Joseph wants to compare the chemical properties of two substances. In doing it, he prepared two flasks containing the substances and labeled them liquid A and liquid B. He monitored the boiling points of the liquids and found that the boiling points were 100 degrees Celsius for liquid A and 110 degrees Celsius to 112 degrees Celsius for liquid B. How should you classify the two liquids? Which liquid is a pure substance? The pure substance is liquid A and if it is your answer, congratulations! You are correct! 
is we are going to compare the boiling point of the two liquid samples. Liquid A has a fixed boiling point which is 100 degrees Celsius while liquid B's boiling point is not fixed which is 110 degrees Celsius to 112 degrees Celsius. I hope that you understood pure substances. This time, let's talk about mixtures which is another class of matter. For today's lesson, here are our learning goals. Number one, define mixtures based on a set of properties. Number two, describe homogeneous and heterogeneous mixtures. And number three, cite importance of mixtures. For you to be guided on our lesson, let's answer the pre-assessment. Again, prepare your pen and paper. Are you ready? Let's begin! Number 1. Which of the following is not a property of a substance? A. It melts completely. B. It does not boil and melt. C. The boiling point is always 100 degrees Celsius. D. Has a portion that does not melt. Among the choices, letter A describes the property of a substance. The correct answer is letter A. Number 2. Which of the following is a property of mixture? A. It consists of a single phase. B. It has definite composition. C. It has heterogeneous composition. D. It can be chemically separated into its components. Mixture is a category of matter that can be chemically separated to its components. That's letter D. Number 3. Which of the following is a heterogeneous mixture? A. Air B. Soft drink C. Oil in water D. Stainless steel Among the following samples, the only mixture is oil in water, and that is letter C. Number 4. What are the two classes of matter? A. Atom and molecule B. Plants and animals C. Substance and mixture D. Elements and compounds Matter has two classes and these are substance and mixture. The answer for question number 4 is a letter C. Number 5. What is true about mixture? A. It has a fixed boiling point. B. It melts completely and smoothly. C. It is homogeneous or uniform in appearance. D. It can be homogeneous or heterogeneous. A mixture has two types, homogeneous and heterogeneous. Among the choices, the only property that suits mixture is letter D. How's your score? Did you find it hard? No need to worry because we will discuss more about this for you to better understand mixtures. What is a mixture? If two or more pure substances are mixed together, it is a mixture. Mixture can always be separated to its components because the atoms of the constituent substances are not bonded. What are the properties of mixtures? Its properties are opposite to the properties of pure substances. If pure substances appear to be homogeneous, mixtures can be homogeneous or heterogeneous. When it comes to boiling point, the boiling point of a pure substance is fixed, while in mixture, it's not. When a pure substance melts, 
it melts completely or smoothly all throughout. But when a mixture melts, there are portions that do not melt. Why do we have to test pure substance and mixture by its boiling point and appearance when melting? It's because some pure substance and mixture are hard to determine when you are just looking at it. Now, let's test your understanding on mixtures. Just read the scenario to be flashed on the screen. Take down notes because there will be a question right after. You may now prepare your pen and paper. A student tests the melting point of a certain sample. It starts melting at 91 degrees Celsius and changes over time. According to a data book, there are some portions of the sample that do not melt. What do you think is the sample? A pure substance or a mixture? Are we thinking of the same answer? From the given scenario, it tells that there are some portions of the sample that do not melt. So, the sample is mixture. It's science fact time with Mom Con. Let's have a break. Do you love pets like birds, cats, rabbits, or dogs? If you're going to ask me, I love pets, especially dogs and cats. These are my pets. Have you seen a pug? Pugs are very unique among the breeds of dogs. They are unique because of their flat little faces. Do you know why they look that way? Pugs' cute little flat faces are the result of genetic mutation. Their features have been strongly linked to a gene variant called SMOC2 or Spark-related Modular Calcium Binding Protein 2. The more this mutation was able to suppress SMOC2, to flatter the dog's faces. Well then, that's today's short science fact with Mom Con. Let's go back to our lesson. Mixtures are formed when two or more materials are mixed together. In other words, a mixture is a substance produced by combining two or more substances. There are two types of mixtures homogeneous mixtures, and heterogeneous mixtures. A homogeneous mixture has uniform composition. Examples are mixtures of salt and water, vinegar, and dishwashing liquid. These mixtures have a uniform composition. Heterogeneous mixtures are not uniform in composition. The composition varies from those with at least two faces that remain separate from each other to those with clearly identifiable properties. An example would be ice cubes in soft drink. The ice in the soft drink are in two distinct faces, ice as solid and soft drink as a liquid. Another example is chocolate chip and cookies. The chocolate chip and the cookies can be clearly identified. Salt and pepper, when mixed together, also forms a heterogeneous mixture. Do you understand the two types of mixtures? Let's try to identify the samples. Write HOMO if the given sample is homogeneous mixture and write HETERO if the given sample is a heterogeneous mixture. Write your answer on your paper. Are you ready? Let's start! Number 1. Sand and water Number 2. Milk and cereal Number 3. Air Number 4. Milk Number 5. Orange juice with pulp Number 6. Chicken noodle soup Number seven, blood. Number eight, water and sugar. Number nine, hot coffee. Number 10, rice and beans.
Now, let us check your answers. For number one, sand and water is a homogeneous mixture. The answer is hetero. Two, milk and cereal. The answer is hetero. Three, air. The answer is homo. Number four, milk. Milk is also homogeneous, so the answer is homo. Five, orange juice with pulp. The answer is hetero. Six, chicken noodle soup. The answer is hetero. Seven, blood. Blood is homogeneous, so the answer is homo. Eight, water and sugar. The answer is homo. Number nine, hot coffee. The correct answer is homo. And number 10, rice and beans. It is heterogeneous mixture. The correct answer is hetero. I hope you did a great job. If you did, I congratulate you. Let's see how well you understood today's lesson. Let's answer the assessment. Are you ready? Let's start! Number 1. Based on the table, which of the following is true about liquid A? A. It is a mixture. B. It is an element. C. It is heterogeneous. D. It has a fixed boiling point. If you're going to analyze the data from the table, it shows that liquid A has a fixed boiling point. The answer is letter D. Number 2. Which of the following could be the liquid A? A. Water B. Soft drink C. Fruit juice D. Water salt solution Water has a fixed boiling point which is 100 degrees Celsius. Among the choices, water could be the liquid A and that is letter A. Number 3. Based on the table, which of the following is true about liquid B? A. It is a mixture. B. It is an element. C. It is heterogeneous. D. It has a fixed boiling point. One of the properties of a mixture is that its boiling point is not fixed or it changes over time. So, the liquid B is a mixture and that is letter A. Number 4. You mix soil and water in a jar. After a few days, the soil has settled to the bottom of the jar and the water is at the top. What classification of matter is this? A. Element B. Mixture C. Compound D. Pure substance Mixture of soil showed that this is a heterogeneous mixture. From the choices, the correct answer is letter B. Mixture Number 5. Which of the following describes a homogeneous mixture? A. Uniform in appearance B. Not uniform in appearance C. Has two observable faces D. Particles can be seen at the bottom of the container A homogeneous mixture has a uniform composition and at least one observable face The correct answer is letter A how well did you do in the assessment? Mixtures and substances can be found in your environment or even at your home, such as the air that you breathe, the food that you eat, the water that you drink, and other things that you see, hear, and feel. Now, it's time to be connected on one of our question centers in SciConnected on DepEd TV page. Our question sender is Qchai. 
9 years old from Bago Oshiro Elementary School in Davao City. Her question is, what is acid rain? And how does acid rain become acidic? Acid rain is caused when compounds like sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxide are released into the air produced through a chemical reaction. These substances can rise very high into the atmosphere where they mix and react with oxygen, water, and other chemicals that forms acidic pollutants. Human activities are the main cause of acid rain. Examples are burning of fossil fuels to produce electricity and exhaust from vehicles. Acid rain can cause damage to lakes and streams, can harm forests, can damage objects, and can cause health problems. Thank you so much for your question, Q Chai. I hope that everyone gained additional information from it. If you have science questions, simply post it on SciConnected on DepEd TV page. Kindly follow this format. Hope that you have learned from our lesson today. Thank you so much for sticking with me and see you on the next episode. Again, this is Ma'am Maricon and Samin scientifically saying, think critically, do things differently, and that develop your ability.